we got Kirby here. Welcome back guys, my name is Kirby. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, in this video I wanted to give a conclusion of some of the things that were said and that I learned on the workshop, the Swedish Beatbox workshop uh, the other day. So first off we got the Thorsen who was talking about how to hold the mech and according to him and I've seen a lot of other beatboxers do this as well, they hold it like this more or less uh, with their thumbs up like this and then they ho hold it very very close to the mouth I've not been doing this like at all when I'm at home beatboxing I just hold like this and then I just beatbox uh, so I might if I uh, lower the volume on the mic I might be like <laughs> That might sound better. Thorson talked about a bit about the loop station all as well. Uh, he said that uh, you should, uh, not should, but you could. A good thing to start is starting with the beat before you add up a melody. So it's easier to make uh, a great loop of sounds if you start with the drums. And then you make a or anything like that on that. So Thorson talked a bit about practicing your basic sounds like the case snare that <coughs> he said he learned a lot by uh, like reevaluate them and like think about them again and try to practice them and getting them better look at them in another way. That's he said was a very good thing to do to practice on your basic sound that getting them more powerful as well, and stuff like that. I asked a question to Thorson about transition, how you should transition your beats like and go to for example, and um, he said that you could say something like a story between the beats, so I get down like uh, say something at least and uh, yeah, try to tell a story. Now I just said something random, but yeah, like try to tell something unique. It also helps you to memorize it when you tell a story, uh, to memorize a whole routine. So it's only good things will have a great story. He also talked about not making unnecessary breathing. Uh, sometimes they speed it up too much, so they have to breathe. Uh, like they need a pause before starting the new beat to get the rhythm right. Uh, he recommend not doing that, don't use an unnecessary breathing, just be very precise with your beatboxing. So we talked a bit about the drop as well, um, how to make the drop like, many people speed it up like <laughs> when they're gonna do a drop, and uh, he recommend not doing that, and instead try to focus on frequency sound to get that drop feeling, that build up feeling, try to be like <laughs> When building up something, cut it off. So be like, try to cut it off. Like, don't be, don't speed it up and lose the whole uh, rhythm and flow. You gotta have the rhythm, even though you're building up a beat. Uh, and that many people uh, seem to fail at. We talked about a bit about the singing voice. That, ah, oh, ah, ah. He had been practicing singing a lot just to get the high notes and yeah, to be able to sing very high, to get the like siren good. My siren is not that good because I haven't practiced that much singing. So mine is like, If you uh, practice your singing so that your head voice is the highest possible for you, for you, um, 
you will get the siren pretty good. And uh, there's a lot of things, the trumpet as well. There's a lot of sounds that require very high tones. So that's why it's very important to actually practice singing. But I think you will win so much on doing that because there are so many sounds. <laughs> Then we moved on to Rawclaw and he talked a bit about the performance, having eye contact with the audience. He talked about breaking the routines down to people. So, like some people might not even understand what is happening when I do that or anyone else. Like when the routines are too complex and people don't understand it, it's it doesn't get that good. So try to break it down in the beatboxing break the pattern down then speed it up or add more sounds yeah break it down in some way or, or another just to prove to your audience that um, this is complex and so that they can understand it raw claw talked a bit about variations as well uh, you gotta be very have much variation when you're beatboxing you're not a drum box only making drum sounds you're also making other sounds and a, a song in general is not always like not continuously like that a technique it's about music as well uh, he talked a lot about that he talked about going from slow to quiet slow and fast a quiet to loud and stuff like that and um try to bring all the instrument the whole the whole band like you're you are you are all the instruments and uh, Every instrument should be heard. Rockclaw talked about reversing sounds as well. If someone makes up a new sound, like you can be like uh, reversing the airflow and try to make it that way. And that's a great way to uh, learn new sounds. Like if someone can do something in one way, practice it on the other way, and you might come up with a new sound. He talked a bit about the vocalized lip roll. He, he Rockclaw don't think that sounds good uh, when the tone is like that I think uh, if the lip roll gotta be vocalized you think the tones gotta be much much higher and um, I can make the highest tone he was talking about uh, if you breathe in and then you block it you get a kind of bright tone I can't really do it I think and then you make the lip roll And then you make it very, very loud, the lip roll. And that's, uh, he actually did it, um, like showed us how it sound. And yeah, I gotta admit it sound much, much better when having a very high tone to your lip roll. So that's a very good thing to keep in mind. So Rockclaw talked about the technique like And so on uh, like on the fourth mix on the fourth and um, that was pretty cool technique that you can use in your beatboxing and that sound pretty cool so lastly we got Kim I will talk about some of the things he said uh, if you have a beat like to change it up you can change up the snares it sounds like a whole different uh, routine or a whole different beat just switching up the snares and that was a great tip i think kim was talking a lot about different patterns that you could make uh, and he taught us some of the patterns and that was very helpful so one of the patterns was something like Uh, I can teach you that, uh, I, I just write the pattern there, and um, P is is like a snare, but um, you uh, don't make that, you just make the and the CL is, is making a but with a hollow throat. The most difficult with that pattern was for me, like uh, putting the club and the BMD very close to that, together. You 
you can practice that if you want to. It was a great pattern. He also taught that the <laughs> Lastly, he said I asked a thing about throat bass. I know I got the comments uh, on a big man video that my throat bass doesn't sound like big man and I agree on that and um, I th wondered about it, so I asked about the throat bass. Why why does Big Man's throat bass sound so different uh, from mine? Um, Kim said that uh, Big Man uses another technique in throat bass, uh, and so do I. That was Kim said, and he said that he used the throat bass from the side. I'm not really sure what he meant from that, but he said we're doing it on the side. I could have asked him more about that, but I didn't. Um, but anyways, uh, think about that. Maybe on the side it can help you. I think the throat bass is much about um, practicing and experimenting a lot with your throat. Without further ado, leave a like, leave a comment, share the video, and subscribe. Because more is coming. My name is Kirby. And I am out. I don't know if I'm out Okay, I will cut that out because that sounded terrible.